Since 9-11, big American cities have changed the way they attempt to monitor illegal activities. The U.S. federal government is helping by pumping millions of tax dollars into new policing measures, all in the name of national security. Perhaps the best example of this, or the worst, depending on your point of view, is happening now in the city of Chicago. Officer Thomas McGuire patrols one of North America's toughest beats. The neighborhood is called Cabrini Green. It's in downtown Chicago, and it's notorious for its crime. You're dealing with a lot of domestic violence is the number one, is the number one thing here. Uh, a lot of uh, gang and narcotics activity is probably number two and three. You can see this firehouse up here with the blue awning. There's, it's riddled with bullet holes. There's a girl, they call her Girl X, and this is where she was uh, raped and uh, beaten. Gangs, drugs, and the violence that goes with them. That's what Officer McGuire deals with every day. And like many Chicago cops, Officer McGuire works alone. It's a little more difficult to come across, you know, a group of guys when you're by yourself, unless you want to wait for backup, and then, you know, your chance for uh, surprise is gone already. When the drug dealers see a police car, they scram. They disappear into these dilapidated buildings. A cop on his own doesn't stand a chance of finding them. They can run into any apartment building up here, and a lot of them, a lot of the people wouldn't mind. You know, they come in, it's like safe houses. And then once they're in, you can't, you don't know where they are, and yet, you know, you can't go in there kicking down doors looking for these guys. But these days, cops like Officer McGuire have a new partner. They're called pods, police observation devices. Their cameras placed strategically in high crime locations throughout the city. There are almost a hundred of them around Chicago. The cameras swing around in circles, capturing all the action around them. They're made of bulletproof material. They can capture images with very little light, which means they can work around the clock. It's an eye in the sky. It's always out here. It, me by myself, I'm roving around the area, you know, so no, I'm not gonna see everything. That's where it helps to have the camera. Cabrini Green has seven pods each of them feeding video wirelessly to a central computer at the police station. Like An officer there can select which camera he wants to view. Then he can control that camera, pan it, tilt it, zoom in if he sees anything suspicious. If he sees a crime being committed, he can identify the criminals and send police in to make a speedy arrest. Okay, he's back. These images get recorded to a hard drive, giving cops the evidence they need when they do make an arrest. The cameras have led to many arrests in Chicago, and police are convinced they're getting criminals off the streets. And that looks east, eastbound on Howard Street. The cameras have been so successful at fighting crime, they've been given a new job, fighting terrorism. This is Chicago's emergency operations center. It was set up to prevent and respond to events like the September 11th attacks. The idea here is to continue to build the capacity to effectively respond to acts of terrorism, also to re, you know, effectively deter individuals that would want to do us harm in the city of Chicago. To accomplish that goal, a whole lot of people have been brought together under one roof. 9-11 operators, traffic workers, cops, Homeland Security, the utility companies, they all operate out of this one center. The idea is to have all the resources needed to respond to a big emergency in the same place. It's bomb-proof, hurricane-proof, and its communication system is tamper-proof. And front and center in this new multi-million dollar control room is a wall of video coming from those pod cameras around Chicago. Those cameras are now Chicago's first line of defense against a terrorist attack. That pod camera now becomes a very invaluable tool by having that camera view that obviously brings us intelligence from a street surface level perspective we didn't have. Police officers trained in surveillance monitor these cameras around the clock. They're looking for anything that could be an attack in the making. Some of the pod cameras have now been equipped with gunshot detection. If a microphone in the pod picks up a gunshot, this happens. An alarm goes off, and the camera swings around in the direction of the shot. And if there's an emergency, some kind of major attack, 
then this room switches from surveillance mode to emergency response mode. Previously, static video monitors moved directly to the position of the people who need them. For instance, if the fire department wants to monitor traffic, a giant LCD screen with that information can be sent to them. And then if you notice in the ceiling, we actually have uh, 42 inch LCDs. What we have here is 12 42 inch LCDs with composite video and specific types of applications. The intent is really an in your face type of an awareness. When the monitor comes down, it actually will rest four feet seven inches from the operator or from the actual floor uh, to ceiling. And it really brings that video directly into the operator's face. From this room, authorities can monitor air traffic around North America. They can also monitor wind speed and direction in case of a chemical attack. And they have enough data to create a 3D model of any skyscraper in the city to help them respond to an emergency. We have specific setup where we have intelligence on multiple buildings downtown, showing you all of the internals as well as text data, the number of occupants, emergency numbers. We have real-time intelligence that we can show to key decision makers at a moment's notice. And when those decision makers need to make some decisions, this is the tool that will help them do that. What you're actually looking at here is what we refer to as our map table. It's a combination of a 82-inch desktop with 120 touch sensors, an integrated high-speed digital camera above us, as well as actually looking at two traditional 42-inch plasma screens with touch capability. Authorities in Chicago can use this table to zoom in on any area of the city where there may be trouble. The information comes from low-flying airplanes sent out over the city to gather this data. It allows the user to zoom in on any area down to four meters just by touching the screen. They can see runways at the airport, highways near baseball stadiums. They can even get the computer to display, for instance, every daycare in a given area or the seating arrangement at the baseball stadium. There's only one other table like this in the world. It's at the Pentagon. The capabilities are endless. This is a huge tool for working any major incident in the city. Authorities in Chicago aren't messing around when it comes to gathering intelligence to keep their city safe. No other North American city can boast the kind of system Chicago has in place. And a big part of why Chicago is so safe is because of steps taken in neighborhoods that were not.